Hoffani ddechrau trwy'r dweud diolch i pawb a anfonydd negeseion i fi, diolch o galen. I may not have been in position to respond to them all, but they meant a lot and they made a difference. This is not a statement that is easy for me to make, nor one that I take lightly. Indeed, there have been times in the not too recent past when I was not sure I would or could stand and speak in the chamber again. I do so today because I know my removal from government has been the focus of discussion in this place while I have not been here. I also feel a sense of responsibility to those closest to me and to my many constituents who have demonstrated great patience, understanding and confidence in me. Chloe, I will start by just briefly addressing the circumstances around my leaving government. I know that I can look all my colleagues who sit on these benches in the eye and say that I have never leaked or briefed the media about any of you. In fact, I can say that to everyone in the chamber. Whilst I will not share the detail, I will share that I have formally raised concerns about the process by which I was removed from government, including not being shown any alleged evidence before being sacked, not being made aware that I was ever under investigation, and that at no point was I advised or was it evidence that I may have broken the ministerial code. I absolutely recognise and respect that it is within the gift of any First Minister to appoint and remove members of their government. I understand the nature of politics and completely accept that. I raise concerns not out of self-interest, but because I fundamentally believe in devolution and public service. I have also very real concerns that lessons have not been learnt from the past. Proper process not only needs to be in place and followed with the dignity and respect of individuals involved, but also to uphold the integrity of the civil service and the office of the First Minister. I want to take a moment to reflect on something that is very personal and somewhat difficult for me, but I feel it's important to say for the sake of how we do politics. I know that there's been speculation about my circumstances and about whether I have been well enough to work. This has ranged from what was tantamount to misinformation and what could be put down to misunderstanding. It should not be surprising that what happened has been hugely detrimental to me on a personal level and led to acute anxiety and stress. I have never been signed off work before and I have struggled with this in itself, but there was a point when the thought of just putting my camera on to vote and seeing you all literally took my breath away. I share this now, not in search of sympathy, I don't want people's sympathy, but because my recent experience has brought home to me that whilst we all talk the talk on mental health, there is still more to do to improve our understanding and the impact that it has on individuals and their ability to do things we would ordinarily take for granted. And sadly, I think sometimes we get so caught up in the politics that we don't always think about the person. Yeah. I recently listened to a podcast called Broken Politicians, Broken Politics. I am not broken, but I know now more than I did before that I am breakable, as actually we all are. And I don't believe politics is broken, but it certainly could be better. We've talked about often in this place of a kinder politics, but we can't not have a kinder politics without kinder people and we won't get better politics without being better people. Our own conduct and character is key to the public having trust in those who serve them and believing that politics can be a force for good. Chloe, it, it has been a privilege to serve in my country's government, particularly under the leadership of Mark Drakeford. The trade union movement not only shaped my values, it helped give me my voice, and I am proud to have taken through the most progressive trade union legislation of the devolution era. And the younger me, who struggled with her sexuality, would never, ever have believed that one day I would spearhead the plan to make Wales the most LGBTQ plus friendly nation in Europe. I am truly grateful for that opportunity. And it will always, always be an absolute privilege to serve the community that shaped me as a member of the Senate. I'm only who I am and where I am because of where I come from. And in spite of the challenges and the difficulties, perhaps because of them, I do feel a renewed sense of commitment to the politics of public service and a real determination to continue to contribute to our devolved democracy, my community and our country. Dioch.